pasado va a llorar. Dice. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Shortly, we shall be thanking God from Psalm 124, the verse 1 to 7. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed up us quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bed out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. So based on this, we are saying thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy that located me to live for another year. Thank you for life. Thank you for provision. And thank you for protection throughout this year. A grateful somebody, lift your voice, wave your hands to God, and thank him. Say, Father, thank you for your grace and mercy that has located me to live for another year. Thank you for life. Thank you for provision. Thank you for protection throughout this year. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Somebody lift your hands, begin to wave it to the Lord, and then in the next 10 seconds, give Jesus a shout of praise. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious name. We have thanked the Lord. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Shall we please be on our feet? If you want to bless the name of the Lord, the Bible says in Psalm 115 that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You want to begin to open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. You want to give him the highest praise. Come on, open your mouth and worship him. Give him glory, give him praise. Father, we honor you, we give you praise. You are holy, you are holy. Holy. No creation call you God and worthy is your name.
say you are bowing down and still say one more time. We bow down, we bow down and worship. Let's go. We bow and worship. Bye. 
growth glory to Jesus the owner and the builder of our magnificent church amen give a clap unto Jesus thank you my father God's gallant soldier we are taking our prayer for church growth Acts 16 verse 5 and it says and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily when rise we shall be praying the father in the name of Jesus turn this church into a revival center for soul winning Help us to see multitudes saved daily in our various outreaches in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we kindly rise to our feet and begin to declare this prayer in the ears of our Father, the Father in the name of Jesus. Turn this church into a revival center for soul winning. Help us to see multitudes saved daily in our various outreaches in the name of Jesus. Radele bosiada la brandele moli andele. Regadele bosiada la banda la ba. Re capade la brandele mosi ande. E capada la bandele moli ada la bandele be. Father, in the name of Jesus. Turn our church, Holy Hill Chapel, into a revival center for soul winning. In the name of Jesus. Re capada la bandele be. Re madoli anda la brandele be. E capada la bandele be. Re capadoli la ba. 
Maka padiana la bandelebe, e kadiana la bando, e mosi kapadiana la ba, e kapodiana la bandelebe. Father, help us to see multitude serving our church in our various outreaches in the name of Jesus. Re kapadiana la ba, ramadoli anda la ba, e kapadiana la bandelebe. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Supernatural good church. Help me appreciate Jesus, the owner and the builder of our church. Thank you, Daddy, for the opportunity. The Bible says that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. supernatural growth 
please, you shall have whatsoever you say. It is our year of supernatural growth. Let us please put our hands together and appreciate Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church. We also want to thank him for the life of our father, Reverend Dr. Kojo Boate Bempa, and also our mother's life. And we are welcome to this morning's service. Amen. I'm reviewing our book for the month, Holy Spirit, my partner for all-round success. Holy Spirit, my partner for all-round success. And I'm picking just the introductory part because it's very powerful. Now, that here says that we live in a world ruled by spirits. Most are evil spirits tormenting and destroying destinies. This one, whether you believe it or not, that is the case. That, that's what people say, Bibi will be asked, you know. Have you heard that comment before? Because many things, in fact, this week, me now, I've seen something that makes me know, say, the world is truly ruled by spirits. Maybe I'll share it another time. Nothing is ordinary. No ordinary man walks on this earth like that. But that is, unfortunately, most of these spirits are evil spirits that are tormenting the lives of people. And sometimes, if you've been to deliverance ministries, you see how people manifest through people. One day, one little girl visited my sister. Then suddenly, we went to see the girl. The girl has become straight like a dead body. Then the girl, who has never spoken fancy in her life, started speaking fancy and called my sister, Mekuma. My sister panicked. She said, Jesus, I'm dead over here. Then started talking and talking. He said, this is a small girl, like eight years. Suddenly started talking, manipulating. Later when we found out from the mother, she said, eh, this baby, the day she was born was the day the father died. But you see, interestingly, the father has been speaking through her all the time, directing us, giving us this, giving us that. Demonic spirits tormenting the lives of people. Now, this particular girl, my sister said, she's a good girl, I want her to stay with me. Just when that thing happened, by way, she had to go, destroying the destinies of people. A dead person speaking through an eight-year-old child every period, every time. These are evil spirits tormenting the lives of people. And so that he says, because of this, the ordinary person will find it difficult to succeed without the backing of a greater power because of that. That is why the Holy Ghost must dwell in us. When the Holy Ghost is in us, is the reason for our success in everything from ministry to personal living. We know that the book says all wrong success. There are people who are successful probably in ministry, but they're not doing well in their finances. Some are doing well in their finances and not doing well in school. Some are doing well in school. They are not doing well in marriages. But when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall be successful in every area of your life. That's what that is saying here. So when it comes into your life, you have all around success. This means that there is total and complete success. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. He will turn every failure into a success. All you need to do is to seek him all the days of your life. So 2 Chronicles 15, 15 says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they have sworn with all their hearts and sought him with all their desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord gave them rest round about. Now the Lord over here in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, he says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So talking about the Lord, we are talking about the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is with us, we have rest round about. When the Holy Ghost is with us, we have rest round about. And that is why. It is important for us to partner with the Holy Ghost. I'm sure many of us have companies here where we talk about partnerships, you know, and people are excited that I got an international partner. Why do we get excited at partnership? Because anytime you partner with somebody, your scope of influence enlarges. What you cannot do by your own self, your partner will help you accomplish that. That is the same way when you partner with the Holy Ghost. Wherever limitations are, that limitations are broken. And so you need the partnership of the Holy Ghost. But how can we do that? We need to learn. We need to acquire knowledge. And that is why our Father has written this book. To help us partner with the Holy Ghost for all wrong success. Please get a copy of the book. And I know that your life will never be the same. God bless you. Supernatural growth. Indeed, there are no limitations in any situation. Let's thank Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church. And let's also thank our father and our mother for this opportunity. 
So here are the Faith Cathedral announcements for March 12th today. Number one, soul winning and televangelism comes off on Saturday at 9 a.m. All members are encouraged to participate in it to help advance this year's church growth agenda. Number two, there will be home cell meeting on Saturday at our various cell centers. The time is 6 to 7 p.m. For direction to a home cell in your area, talk to our cell ministers at the tent outside the auditorium when the service closes. Number three, we wish to remind all members of Operation Bus Someone to Church. This is aimed at giving members an opportunity to invest their money into conveying souls to church with every available means of transportation. All cell leaders must assist their members who need transportation to come to church. If you have more than 20 people in any location, kindly call Pastor Kingsley Sam on 0242 331 257 for assistance. Number four, School of the Word training session will continue today at 2 p.m. at Dominion Chapel. Number five, all virtuous women, that is women over the age of 35 and all married women, are kindly informed that there will be a brief meeting after first service today at the Nursing Mothers Hall at the first, at the first office block. So you just climb these stairs just here. Good news, number six. There will be a special anointing service with our Father on Tuesday, 14th, February, sorry, 14th of March. This special service is dubbed Anointing for Greater Works. Remember to come with your own bottle of anointing oil. Number seven, upcoming weddings. Yes, put your hands together. For Prince and Eunice, and that is on the 1st of April. God bless you. Have a wonderful service. Is our year of supernatural growth. Oh, let's celebrate Jesus. He's the owner and the builder of this great commission. And I want to thank Daddy for this opportunity. Now I'm here for a, a short assignment. And the assignment is that we, those who are in Holy Hill Chapel, Assemblies of God, from the directive of the Holy Spirit through our Father, every month, everybody sitting here must bear one fruit by bringing one soul one soul to this church. Amen. And then we take that scripture from Revelation chapter 22 verse 2. And I wish all of us would read it. It says, In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, it is a problem in the society of our communities and in this nation here. Me mostly in Africa. If you are not a fruit-bearing person after marriage, that is, so we call it fruit of the womb, meaning the womb must produce another of our kind, true or false. The same way it is in the kingdom. If you don't bear fruit, it's a problem. And so I want us to look at John chapter 15, what Jesus said about fruit-bearing. You can't be just an ordinary member in the church without bearing fruit. It's a problem in the realms of the spirit. In the book of First John chapter 15, it says, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So it means that you can't be here and not bear fruit at all. And if, if, you see, it is, it is stigmatized on you if you don't bear fruit. It's like they'll be pointing fingers on you. Perhaps the same way angels will be pointing hands on you if you don't bear fruit. It's like you are walking there and Michael say, look, look at it. They are barren in their spirit. That will not be your portion. And then the verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should 
remain. And so the whole year, one soul, one month. And then out of the 12 souls, establish four. Let four remain. If four remains, look at what the Bible says. It says that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So it means everything that we need is tied on our fruit bearing. So it is not just like we want to become plenty in the church. No, it is a task and it is a mandate that you bear fruit. You can't be fruitless. You can't be barren. Just bear one fruit, one soul per month. Every month, be honest. just get one person that you have brought to church. Every, every month, be honest. bring one person that you, you, the person will be in this church. And that is the mandate God has given us. If we don't do this, then this scripture reverses itself. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, it will not be given to you. So whatever we need, whatever, God, whatever we want from God, all God requires from us is that every man to be honest, we should bring him just one soul. When we keep doing this every month, then by the end of the year, every heart desires on your heart, it will be given. And this is also one of the master keys. Can you imagine having a key that can open multiple doors? It's a good key. And this key is one of the keys that opens multiple doors. Prayer is a key. Um, soul winning is a key. Giving is a key. All those keys in the kingdom. But this one says that whatever, 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 everything you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it to you. So your international travel is in the soul you will bring a month. Your miracle car is in the soul. Some of you need just one million, just one million dollars. It's in that soul you will bring in this month. So we are in which month now? March 3. If you have not done this mandate, you owe God three souls. So if you want more souls, there are people who have more souls, we can sell some to you. Put your hands together to Jesus. Supernatural growth. Help me thank the Lord Jesus, the owner and builder of this church. And help me also thank God for the life of our father, Reverend Dr. Kojo Boateng Bempa, and our mother, Lady Pastor Patience Ketura Bempa. It's time for us to hear the wonderful things God is doing in our lives. And as we hear them and appreciate God for them, God is going to duplicate them and do even more for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first testifier is Sister Josephine, who testifies of supernatural intervention and open door. She says, I am a final year student in one of the universities in Accra, but my family is based in Kumase. Due to this, I was always worried about where to do my national service. I personally wanted to do my national service in Accra, but my mother was not in support of that decision. On Sunday, 22nd January 2023, I came to Holy Hill Chapel. This was the first time in three years since I had come to church. I was so desperate for direction and supernatural intervention that I sold all the money I had at hand. On my way to class two days after the service, that was 24th of January 2023, I received a phone call from my stepbrother who works in a mining company in Kumase saying that he wanted to find out how I was doing. In our conversation, he asked me the program I was studying in school and where I wanted to do my national service. When I told him about my program, he told me that when it is time to choose a firm he would work with, I should inform him so that he would help me secure a slot at his workplace or find another mining company for me to work with. It took just two days to settle a long pressing need that I did not know a way out of. Indeed, the God of Holy Hill Chapel speaks and works speedily. Thank you, glorious Jesus, for this miracle. And so, even as you appreciate this testimony, God is going to direct you as well in every situation that you are not sure of. Our sister Leslie also testifies of supernatural provision of school fees and mobile phone. 
She says, my father lost his job before I completed senior high school. So even though I passed my final exams excellently, there was no money for f- to further my education. By the grace of God, my kindergarten teacher showed up and paid my tuition and hostel fees. Hallelujah. And this was for 2022 academic year. In that same year, I started having issues with my phone, and this became a problem as I was not able to do my assignments. So during the 30 days change of story in September 2022, I believed God for a brand new phone, a well-paying job for my father, and a financial breakthrough before the year ended. I also sowed seeds to provoke a miracle. God is good, people of God. One of the pastors in this church bought me a brand new phone. Additionally, I had to pay my fees before registering for my first semester course for the 2023 academic year. I was believing God again for an intervention, and God did not fail me. My father's classmate paid 60% of the fees. Jesus is Lord. He always provides for his children. My heart is so full of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is here again. He is going to provide for you all your heart desires in Jesus' name. And our final testimony before we take our life, our sister Anita Ajwa testifies of miracle baby and favor for marriage through prophetic prayer. She says, I am part of a foundation for women. During the prophetic mantle and impartation service in January 2022, I came with three ladies from the group for daddy to pray for them. Out of the three, one of them had been looking for for a child for about six years without success. Another one was also facing constant disappointments in her relationships leading to a delay in her marriage. Before meeting daddy, I told them to make up their minds that as they had come to see daddy, they would receive whatever they yearned for. People of God, as I testify, the one who needed a fruit of the womb has given birth to a beautiful baby girl. The other one who was experiencing disappointments and delay in marriage now has a fiancé and is about to get married. Hallelujah. Our God is an impossibility specialist. There is absolutely nothing that is above him. And he has set his servant over us to help us assess our breakthroughs. Thank you, Jesus. And so shall you also assess your breakthrough this morning, even as you are in the service, and the man of God is going to declare over your life in Jesus' name. We'll call L.P. Jocelyn to give us a testimony about seed sowing yielding a traffic of testimonies. Supernatural overflow. No limitation. Please help me thank Jesus, who is the owner and the builder of this beautiful church. My testimony goes like this. Um, Early January, um, my husband and I needed about $11,000. And we were trusting God for that amount of money. And one early morning, I think during our 21 days prayer and fasting, I was in my bathroom. And the Holy Spirit just told me, tell your husband to sow $700. Well, I told him. And immediately we came and sold the money to daddy. Two weeks after that, we got $7,000. It did not end there. Um, For a service that I had rendered, imagine 2019. Um, the gentleman called me and said, look, it's quite a huge amount of money, but I'm going to start paying in bits. So immediately, he sent $40,000, eh, sorry, 40,000 Ghana cities and told me he'll be paying the rest in installments. This is money that I had been chasing since 2019. Anyway, 
Then my second testimony goes this way. Um, around COVID 2019 again, um, we secured a 25 acre land um, in Winneba, somewhere there, Pomazi area, somewhere there. And I had been struggling to clear the land because as of last year, if you hire a pin loader, it costs 5,000 Ghana cities a day. They work for eight hours and it costs 5,000 Ghana. So as of last year, I was able to clear only about five acres. And I was believing God for money to just clear up everything. Um, one of the sons of the prophet miraculously walked to my husband and said, look, I have most of the heavy duty machinery. If at any point in time you need anything, just let me know. True to his words, about two or three weeks ago, we called him. He gave me a driver and for eight days, they cleared the whole, the entire land. And this year, it cost 8,000 cities a day to hire the machine, only for eight hours. So the eight days, would have, it would have cost me 64,000. I only paid 20,000 in fuel. And finally, I want to thank God for academic excellence for, I have three girls. Um, the youngest of them is nine. I remember when I had this child, you know, doctors scared me. They said so many things. I've even shared my testimony here before. Um, relocating to Ghana because of this child, I was like, oh no, you know, what am I going to do? LP Penning, God bless you. He says, Jocelyn, come. Come, don't mind the doctors. Whatever these people say, God is able to do above and beyond. And since she started school, to the glory of the almighty God, academic excellence, every, every, everywhere. There is no time that this child does not take an award. Even on Thursday, she's taking two. Next week, Thursday. Last year, she emerged the second best in her class. I, I give God thanks, people of God. I give the almighty thanks. To him alone be the glory. Thank you. And so shall God do exceedingly abundantly for you, even as you sit under the voice of the servant of God, and you listen to every instruction and obey it. God is yet to do something miraculous in your life that will blow your mind. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We thank God for these testimonies and as she was speaking, this... Ah, all the way from Singapore at the Trinity Assemblies of God Church coming your way from the Adam congregation. By the grace of God, we've been here for some days attending pastor's conference. We've been impacted. Our lives have never been the same. We are coming to Ghana. I want to invite every holy healer, all the sons of the prophets, this coming Tuesday to this mega anointed service entitled Anointed for Great Hours. Bring your own bottle of oil. It's going to be a very impactful healing, miracle teaching service. Your life and destiny will never, never, never be the same. All holy healers are welcome. This Tuesday is a special Tuesday. God is going to anoint us for miracles, signs and wonders and especially the spirit of soul winning. Acts 1 8 he said, he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We are in the last days. I believe most of you have heard this early morning yesterday, today that the American banking system has started collapsing. Major shake up in the Silicon Valley Bank. These are all signs of the end times. And as we are getting closer to the end times, the most important thing is to concentrate on show winning and to win souls. And he that win a soul is wise. And once we win souls, God is going to provide for those who do what he wants them to do. God bless you. This coming Tuesday on the 14th of March, all roads lead to Holy Hill. 
for this special anointing service. Don't miss it. Your life and destiny will never be the same. We are coming with full loaded with fresh oil. Anointing for greater works. Come with your own bottle of oil. Your life and destiny will never, never be the same. And I also bring you greetings for this morning's service. Be blessed as you hear the word. God richly bless you. Amen. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we're going to prepare our hearts to receive God's word. We need the Holy Ghost to prevail in every circumstance, every situation. We invite you, Holy Spirit.
Precious Holy Precious Holy Ghost. Lead God. Lift your hands up to Him. I worship you. I worship you.
together and celebrate Jesus I did not ask you to clap for me I said it is unto Jesus it is unto Jesus thank you Lord thank you Father for your presence in our midst this morning we thank you let's please be seated thank you It's a very beautiful Sunday morning, and I know the Lord has something to deliver to us, and my prayer is that before you leave here, you will be empowered to do exploits for Jesus. I did not hear your amen, and I want you to help me to express my gratitude to my father in the Lord, Reverend Dr. Bempa, put your hands together. A man that God has engraced for the body of Christ, not only Holy Hill, for the entire body of Christ around the globe. And the Bible enjoins us to honor those who preach the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Help me, let's honor him once again. I told you some years ago when I was in the university and leaders were being appointed to serve in the church, talking about AGCM, I was told that I didn't qualify because um, I didn't have any spiritual gifts. I couldn't prophesy. I couldn't see. Oh. But when I came to Holy Hill, our father saw something in me. And he allowed me to serve in the ministry that God has called him. I am grateful. Let's, let's honor God's servant. Very, very grateful. Because if I were somewhere else, perhaps I would never have been considered to be a pastor. Since you can't see and prophesy, you can't see visions, you can't prophesy, you are not qualified. But we heard the last time that God does not call the qualified. He calls and anoints to qualify you. So I am very, very, very grateful that Bishop saw something in me and allowed me to serve in this church. And I should tell you, just before coming, I remembered that a time in my career when I wanted to change job, the job that I got, that gave me a brand new car. It was through Bishop that I got that job. His friend was the MD of that company. And so he sent me to go and see him. I gave him my CV. And there and then I was employed. And they gave me my first brand new tear rubber car. And I had never driven before. That was the time I was learning how to drive. So I wasn't very confident behind the steering wheel. And the manager came to ask me, um, we want to give you this car. Can you drive? I said, sure. You don't know where I'm coming from. I said I can drive. Because if I said no, there were others in the line to be giving cars. Yes, they would have given it to somebody else, and I may never have had the opportunity to drive that car. So that day, my wife is my witness. I called somebody, one family member, to come all the way from Adenta, I managed to bring, at that time, the church was at a champion bus stop. So that evening, I drove quietly, slowly. And I came, when I was coming, I was praying in tongues. And then I came to park quietly over there. And then I called the guy. Because when we close, you know, this Adenta Highway, I can't pass on it. So 
He came to join me and then took me home. The next morning, I called him again. He brought me. When I got to the office junction, I, he, I dropped, I gave him money, go away. <laughs> and I drove. Till date, the manager doesn't know that is what I did. But today I'm standing here as a good driver. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you need to appreciate the importance of fathers. Uh -huh. There are things that you think you can have without fathers, but you'll be deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. So, I want to thank God's servant again for the opportunities and the privileges he has given me. And we also want to honor the first lady, yes, our mother, for providing us the support, the encouragement to do God's work in this house. And all pastors in Holy Hill, able men of God, anointed and appointed by God, let's honor our pastors who are standing with our Father in doing this work. All right, so this month we are talking about empowered by the Spirit for exploits. Empowered by the Spirit for exploits. Exploits. In other words, being empowered by the Spirit to do great things and to win more souls for God. And as a matter of fact, when we talk about the empowerment of the Spirit, we can't exclude the subject of soul winning because that is the main assignment of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, our Father has given me a mandate to deliver a short message on the Holy Spirit and evangelism. The Holy Spirit and evangelism, or the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the harvest. The Holy Spirit, the Lord of the harvest. That is the subtitle. Now we're going to be looking at two major points. We are considering two major points. One, the role of the Holy Spirit in soul winning. The role, what is the work of the Holy Spirit in soul winning? And number two, how can we engage him for effective soul winning? So to start, let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, you may start from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. He said, a former treatise, this is Luke writing to a man called Theophilus, and he said, a former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So Jesus came to do something. And as we proceed, we get to know what he came to do. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles. So Jesus gathered the apostles and he was giving them instruction through the Holy Spirit. So it's just like we've gathered here and the Spirit is giving us instruction this morning. So jump to verse 4. Jump to verse 4. And so he said, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Now, you know that previously he had been talking to them about the promise of the Father, and he explained to them that the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So he said, I'm about to go, but wait, tarry at Jerusalem, don't go anywhere. Wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now this morning I pray that a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost will fall on someone in Jesus' name. You are not ready for the baptism. I say, may a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Now verse 8. Verse 8. 
is a punch. He said, but you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost is come on you. For what? So the Holy Ghost was coming. They were waiting. Wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And he says, when he comes, what will happen to you? Can we all read together? When he comes, what will happen? You shall receive what? Power. For what? So that we will be what? Witnesses unto Jesus. That you will be my witnesses. So from here, what do we see about the work of the Spirit? What is the work of the Spirit? From here, when the Spirit comes, what are you supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? To witness. That is it. That's the main assignment. Of course, there are other works. When we talk about exploits, it covers a lot. But the main thing is about the business of soul winning, being a witness for Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. So our father said, you know, last week we had workers' uh, summit, and daddy was teaching this, this, this same subject. And he was telling us that if the Holy Ghost is truly in you, he will drive you to win souls. So if you are a Christian, a believer, and you are not interested in soul winning, it is possible that uh, the spirit in you is Ghana ghost or your family ghost. Yeah, it's not the Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost is in you, when the spirit came upon the apostles, it drove them into the field to win souls for Jesus. So in Matthew 9, 36, Matthew 9, 36 to 38, he said, talking about Jesus, he said, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Don't forget that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah? Whilst he was being baptized, the Bible says that the Spirit came upon him like a dove, settled on him, and the heavens opened. And then he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, fasting and praying. And verse 14 of Luke chapter 4 says that he returned in the power of the Spirit. So he, he, he had in him the Spirit that drives people to win souls. So he said when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. So if you you have the spirit of Christ. This is the way you also see people. Jump to the next verse. Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are very few. So then, what do you do? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Somebody say the Lord of the harvest. I can hear you. The Lord. Yes, yeah, so we are learning. Take time and follow me. The Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So the first important point to note is that, one, you can write it. The Holy Spirit is the senior partner of the church in the work of soul winning. The Holy Spirit is the senior partner of the church in the work of soul winning. And we call him the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. Why? Because he is in charge of the gathering of souls. He is in charge of the gathering of souls. And Bishop Oedipo said, he is the master mobilizer of souls. He is the master mobilizer of souls. He only uses us as vessels. Paul planted, Apollo swatted, but God gave the increase. Yes, we go out to preach, we minister to others, but in the end, it is the Spirit of God that draws the souls. Now, he is the master mobilizer, as I said, and therefore without him, we cannot be effective in our soul winning business. Now, Every businessman wants results, right? When you're doing business, you want to see results. That when you do this, you get a 
expected results. Now, in our soul winning business, the one that makes us effective is the Holy Spirit. You can't take him out. And last Tuesday, we discovered that even God couldn't do without the Spirit. Because from the beginning, when he was creating the world, the Bible said that, and the Spirit of God did what? Moved. So even God himself, whatever he does, he does by his Spirit. So we can't do anything without the Spirit. Now, examples. Examples. Number one, Jesus Christ. His mission According to Luke 19.10, what did he come to do? The Bible said that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That was his mission. But he could not do it except he was empowered by what? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. He could only fulfill his mission of soul winning after he had been empowered by the Spirit. So Luke 3.21 says that, now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended on him in a bodily shape like a dove. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son. In thee I am well pleased. The Spirit came upon him. And that spirit drove him into the wilderness, according to Luke chapter 4, 1 to 2. He was led of the Holy Ghost into the wilderness, where he was tempted of the devil. He was fasting and praying. And verse 14 says that he returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4, 8, 14. He returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, this morning, you're going to return in the power of the Holy Ghost. May somebody be empowered in the name of Jesus. Yes. So in Luke 4.18, he testified about himself. When he entered the temple and took the scriptures, he opened the place in the scripture where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. So until you are anointed, you can preach. Yeah. Until you are anointed to a certain level, you may not be able to preach. He has sent me to preach, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. The Holy Ghost is the spirit that brings liberty. Until he comes upon you, your message cannot liberate anyone. But this morning, his power is falling on you in Jesus' name. Now, another example is in the book of Acts. In fact, the whole book of Acts, it's all about the Holy Ghost and evangelism. If you ask me to summarize the book of Acts, all I will say is that it's all about how the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and the members of the early church and they went out preaching. All the rest of the stories, the content, the Paul and Silas uh, put in prison. They prayed and sang praises unto God. And all of it is about soul winning missionary work. Peter preaching to the Jews. Paul ministering to the Gentiles and other people around the world. It's all about soul winning. So this, uh, this message is actually, most of the scriptures come from the book of Acts. Now let's see in Acts 1, 4 to 5. We've read that scripture again, but for the purpose of emphasis, he assembled them together and commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Verse 8, he said, when the Spirit comes, you shall receive power. So in chapter 2, actually they waited. They waited and the Holy Ghost came upon them. And after the Spirit came upon them, what happened? Multitudes were added to the church. Multitudes were added to the church. Acts 2.41. Acts 2.41. They that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls. Now, don't forget that those that gathered were how many? Are there Bible students here? How many were they? Pastor Kuka, how many were they? 120 people. Now, at the end of that revival... Bible says that 3,000 souls were added. So how many were they now? 3,000 
120. Can you calculate the percentage increase? How much is that? 2,500% in a day. When the Holy Ghost worked through the apostles, in a day, the church saw an increase of 2,500%. Is it not amazing? Put your hands for, for, for the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the growth didn't stop there. It continued. In Acts 4.4, 4, Bible said that 5,000 souls were added. Acts 4.4, 4, all because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Acts 5.14, it said multitudes were added. Acts 6.7, the disciples multiplied as the word of God increased. The disciples multiplied. So they were able to see supernatural exponential church growth because they engaged the Holy Ghost, the Lord of the harvest. The Holy Ghost, the Lord of the harvest. So what we are saying is that the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the second point you should note, the ministry of the Holy Ghost is needed for effective, fruitful soul winning. There cannot be effective soul winning and evangelism without the Holy Spirit. There cannot be effective soul winning without the Holy Spirit. Any divine assignment needs to be carried out in the energy of the Spirit. It cannot be done by the flesh. And so in Zechariah 4, 6, when God needed Zerubbabel to lead in the rebuilding of the temple of God, God through a prophet gave him a word. He said, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of God. This morning, may you be empowered by the Holy Ghost. I said, may you be empowered by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. So this leads us to a very important question. What is? does the Holy Ghost do in soul winning? Very, very important. I'm giving you some eight points, and after that, we talk about how we can engage him. What is the work of the Holy Spirit in soul winning? Number one, the Holy Spirit empowers us to pray for the salvation of souls. The Holy Spirit empowers us to pray for the salvation of of souls. Many people cannot pray because they are not empowered by the Spirit or they have not allowed the Holy Ghost to empower them. They have believed in Jesus Christ but they have not yet received the Spirit. So the other day Paul asked the people, since you believed have you received the Holy Ghost? So what I'm explaining should help you to position yourself to receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost into your life so that you can become a great intercessor that through your prayers, others will come to know Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he said in Zechariah 12, 10, he said, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Now, when you check this scripture in other versions, supplication means prayer. I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. So there is something called the spirit of prayer. If it falls on you, you can pray and pray and pray and pray for the spirit to bring revival. When that spirit comes on you, many of us, when we stand at the place of prayer, after a few minutes, we get tired. We start dozing off. Bible says in Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, he said, likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we, we should pray as we ought, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings. With groanings. Groanings. 
When we are praying, you hear people speaking in the language of the Spirit. It gets to a point you can't even hear exactly what they are saying. All you hear is, that is groaning in the Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost moving in you to pray according to the will of God so that men will be saved. Yeah. The spirit of prayer and supplication. So until we pray, souls will not be born. Isaiah 66 verse 8. When Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. So until we travel in prayer, until we travel in prayer, Holy Hill, we are believing God for explosive growth. That the time is coming, the souls can no longer be contained in this church. We will break this wall and extend it into the streets. Why? Because multitudes are coming. Multitudes are coming. Multitudes are coming. Multitudes are coming. But it starts on our knees in the prayer room. The prayer room is like a labor world. Yes. So, so God is looking for men who will stand in the place of prayer and by diligence labor. Labor. Labor to see souls saved. Labor. Pray for the salvation of souls. Until Zion travels. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. Who has heard such a thing? And who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. Naturally speaking, it is not possible that in a day, 3,000 souls will be added to the church. But when we enter into the prayer room and we engage the Holy Ghost, he can bring in a flood of souls. He can bring in a flood of souls so that God's end time prophecy for the church will be fulfilled. He said in the last days, the church will be exalted above the hills and above the mountains. And he said, multitudes from nations, they shall flow into the church. I see multitudes flowing into the church through your prayer. May God empower you on the prayer altar. May God empower your prayer life. Are you ready to be an intercessor for Jesus? Lift your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, empower my prayer life. Say, empower my prayer life. Give Jesus a big hand. So a great man of God said, a praying church is a growing church. The scripture we just read spoke about groaning in prayer. So when we groan, we grow. A groaning church, a church that groans in prayer, grows without limits. When we groan, when we travel in prayer, it results in growth. Now, don't think Holy Hill got to where we are by chance. No. It hasn't been by chance. It hasn't been by chance. It has been the engagement of multiple keys and principles of the kingdom. And prayer has been one of the pillars. Prayer has been one of the major pillars right from the inception of the church. Praying different kinds of prayers at different times, different seasons, different forms of prayer. And that's why we are here. Because it's amazing that when you cast your eyes back, a church that started with only six people now counts more than 2,000 people. Is it not amazing? And I'm showing you that prayer has been one of the pillars we have engaged to see the church this far. And we are not stopping here. We are going forward in Jesus' name. If you believe, shout a believing amen. amen. Shout a tenderous amen. amen. Mm. Is somebody willing to pray? Point number two. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be effective witnesses. We are trying to answer the question, what does the Holy Spirit do in our lives? The Holy Spirit empowers us to be effective witnesses. And take note of the word effective. You could be witnessing. Yes, daddy said we should go and win souls. But you may go out and, as we are saying, everybody should try and win one soul per month. So you bear fruit. You may go out and never bear fruit. It means that you are not being effective. 
All right? You are not getting results. So the person that makes the difference in our soul winning efforts is the Holy Spirit. And again, in Acts 1, 8, he said, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. So what does it mean to be an effective witness? It means that you don't just speak. When you speak, your words carry power. Your words are enveloped in a certain grace that makes the word prick the hearts of people. Yeah. When you open your mouth to utter a word, those who hear you can't stand without giving their lives to Christ. That is what it means to be an effective witness. A witness, somebody that can testify about what Jesus has done in their lives. What Jesus came to do on earth. Why he came. And it is the Holy Spirit that gives us that ability, the utterance to speak forth the word of God. John 16, verse 7 to 11. He gives us supernatural utterance, enabling us to speak the right words that lead to conviction and repentance. So when, when you go out preaching, you are not the one going to change anybody. You are not the Holy Ghost. The conviction is the work of the Holy Ghost, not you. So I saw a joke on uh, TikTok. Somebody going to win a soul and he's like, he's gone. Ah, the soul is not uh, giving his life to Christ. So the, finally, he went with a cane and something and said, today, 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 you must go to church. You must give your life to Christ by force. Hey, that's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't go even with condemnation. Sometimes you are talking to somebody and he's blowing fuse on you. He's, he's drunk or go grow a petition. And you can smell it very bad. As soon as you smell it, no, you start preaching. Alcohol, those who are drinking alcohol, they are all going to hell. No, 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 no. You miss it. You miss it. You must allow the Spirit of God to lead you to say the right words. That will convict the soul. You are not the Holy Ghost. So our job is to do the preaching. The Holy Ghost does the conviction and the repentance. So in John 16, 7 to 11, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he comes, he will reprove or convict the world of sin. Can you give it to me in uh, NIV? NIV. He will convict the world about sin and righteousness and judgment. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict. First Corinthians 2, 4, I'm trying to explain what it means to be an effective witness. And it has to do with what you say when you go so winning. There are times that the Holy Spirit will lead you to maybe start talking about uh, recent global events, maybe the, 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 the earthquake happening in Turkey, and just this morning, our father told us about the banking sector in America going through turbulence. One major bank has come down. I saw it this morning. Okay? And you start talking from that angle. All right? Or it can be a testimony. You don't need to go with plenty of scriptures. Before you realize, you go and say Jonah chapter 1 verse... Or you will say Paul chapter 1 verse 15. There's nothing like Paul chapter 1 verse 15. Or you say, Paul and his wife, Aquila. Mercy, Lord. You don't need to go with plenty of scriptures. It can be something, a very simple story or a testimony you heard in church about the change Jesus made in somebody's life. The Holy Ghost will be leading you to do that. And when you follow his leading, you get results. So he said, in 1 Corinthians 2.4, can we project 1 Corinthians 2.4? Look at Paul. He said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. So Paul didn't go to his, you know, harvest field with oratory. It is good. It is good. If maybe because of your background, the kind of training you have had, you know how to speak is good. We like it. But you must understand that that is not the reason why somebody is going to be saved. 
Yeah, they can listen to you and just clap your hands. Oh, this guy, Charlie, you can speak very well, but they'll still not change. They'll not change. They'll not change. Or you load money in your pocket thinking that, oh, if I go and I tell you, oh, if you want to come to church, I'll give you money. So you take. They will take their money. They will not come. It has happened to us many times. Even just yesterday, you know, you gave somebody money. They didn't come. So it's not about what you do. It's about what the Holy Ghost wants you to do per time. Clap your hands for Jesus if you think it's a good message. Now, another man that was a very effective witness is Peter. Acts chapter 2, 36 to 37. Acts chapter 2, 36 to 37. Bible says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. Please, I think I got the scripture wrong. Look for it for me. Me, I have the correct version here. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? This is after the Holy Ghost had come upon the church and they began to speak in tongues and there was confusion. People would run to listen to what is happening. And Peter, in his effort to explain why they were seeing what was happening, after he had finished speaking, the people were pricked in their hearts. Why? Because his words were influenced by the Holy Spirit. And so after that, the people said, what, what shall we do to be saved? That is how people should respond when we preach the gospel under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They should ask you, so man of God, what should I do? I want to follow you to church. Luke 21, 14 to 15. So you don't need to bother about what to say. Eh? Before you go, you are thinking, okay, I'll start from here. Okay, 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 when I go, I'll say this. No, 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 no. He said, don't even think, don't think, just go, pray. All you need to, to do is just pray, pray in the spirit. That's why every, every Saturday morning before we go out, we all come and sit there. Daddy will lead us, we will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray before we go out. Why? Because we know that the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. So if we are going to be successful in our soul winning efforts, we must engage him. We must engage him. We must pray. So Luke 21 verse 14, he said, Understand therefore in your hearts, don't meditate before what ye shall answer. Now here he was talking about the fact that they are going to be persecuted. They will be called before judges and you know, big people. They will be molesting them. All right? But he said, when they call you, don't think of how you're going to answer them. Verse 15, he said, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, or resist. Yeah. So there is a word the Holy Ghost can put in your mouth that nobody can resist. And I pray this morning, may he fill your mouth with his word. May he fill your mouth with his word. So that that uncle of yours you've been trying to win for Jesus. The Holy Ghost would let you, he will lead you to say the right word he needs to hear to change his mind. Clap your hands for the Lord. Mm. Mark 10, now this same scripture can be seen in Mark 10, 19 to 20. He said, but when they de deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour, what ye shall speak. For it is not you that speaks, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. So it is the Holy Ghost that speaks through us. We don't fabricate our own words. No, 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 no. You do that, you'll miss it. Or you've gone to see, you know, these days people share a lot of things on internet. In fact, internet is, has now become another platform for education. So people are always posting nice things. There's a particular lady I've been checking her status and signs, and I see very nice English, and I'll test her, Charlie. Your English is very powerful. You can go and see something somewhere, and then you copy the words and say, I will use this for so winning, and it will, it will bounce back. <laughs> it will be like tennis ball. You throw it, and it, it bounces back to you. If you allow the Spirit to put in your mouth the right words you speak, you will then be an effective witness. Clap your hands for the Lord again. You know about Stephen. 
The Bible says that the people could not resist the wisdom with which he spoke. Father, make me like Stephen. May I be like Apostle Peter. May I be like Paul. Will you pray that prayer right now? It's a very simple prayer, but if you can pray from your heart, something will happen to you. And after today, you will be a very efficient and effective soul winner. Make me like Apostle Paul. Anoint me with fresh oil. Let me be on fire for you. Like Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So that is it, the Holy Ghost. He empowers us to pray and he empowers us to be effective witnesses. The third thing he helps us to do, he empowers us with supernatural boldness to preach the gospel. Supernatural boldness. You don't fear anybody. Acts 4, 29 to 33. I'll just concentrate on 31 because of time. He said, and when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they stood, right? Where they were stumbled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And watch what happened. After they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said they speak the word of God with boldness. They speak the word of God with boldness. Some of us, the Spirit has put a word in your mouth, but you are afraid. So after he has filled your mouth with what to say, you need him to empower you with boldness. So you declare the word with clarity, with precision, without fear or favor of anybody. You preach, and then you, you turn and you see somebody that looks powerful around, and all of a sudden, you forget what you are supposed to say. You start fumbling. That will not be your story in Jesus' name. May the Spirit empower you with boldness in Jesus' name. May he empower you with boldness in Jesus' name. I remember some time ago, Pastor Kuka and uh, Pastor Cephas, those of us who work in the church office, you remember, you know, we organized a crusade at the Odona Market here. Hmm. You know where we set the crusade platform? In front of the mosque. <laughs> in front of the mosque, please think about it. We are Christians going to preach about Christ. And we, are, we situated our platform in front of the mosque. I'll be very honest. I can't lie on this altar. If I lie, my head is gone. I was very, very, you see, I thought in my mind that, well, because we are in front of a mosque, that they will be careful with the way he's going to pray. Because these people, if you are not careful, you go and say something, they will get angry. And before you realize, they are coming with machete after you. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yes, that's what I thought. So I stood there praying in my heart that, the Holy Ghost will guard Papa's mouth not to go and say anything that controversial thing that will stir some commotion in the area. So I also physically looked around to see just in case something like that happens, where I will pass. <laughs> I won't lie to you, I'm telling you. <laughs> and then he started. Hey! Hmm. <laughs> ah! He started preaching, releasing fire. This time that he will release one bullet, boom, and all of it straight, direct against Islam. But do you know that he preached and preached and preached and preached and nobody was able to, even some of them gave their lives to Christ. That is called the spirit of boldness. And that's what we need. That's what we need. You you, you, you are preaching and you meet a Muslim and he tells you, Master, we are all serving one God. And then because of fear, so oh, it's true, we are all serving one God. Put, you see? You have denied Christ. It's like you want to ask like, oh, I understand. We all serve, Master, and serve one God. Yeah, we are not serving one God. Our God is not the Allah they worship. We serve the only true God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. His name is Jesus. He is the only one we serve. And he's the owner and the builder of the church. Put your hands together for the Lord. You need boldness to declare the word. You don't look at anybody's face. Boldness to speak the word of God. If you want God to use you, you must position yourself to express that boldness. Otherwise, God will bypass you. He's looking for men. The Bible says the eyes of God move to and fro around the world. Looking for him, he must, those he will demonstrate his power through. That he will use you to declare his word fearlessly, boldly, without fear or favor. 
And that person will be you in Jesus' name. I said, that person will be you in Jesus' name. We are talking about soul winning. If you are happy about that, clap your hands for the Lord. So stop saying you are shy. Because if you say you are shy, I'll be surprised that you have a wife and you have three children. How did they come about? You say you are shy, but you can propose. <laughs> so as we are talking about anointed or empowered for exploits, all that you are thinking about, Lord, empower me so I can speak boldly to this lady. You need boldness to preach first. When you do the preaching first, then the boldness to propose will also come. Are the single guys here? This year will be your year of supernatural growth. God will give you a powerful wife. Put your hands together for the Lord. Number four. I'll be closing very soon. Please, relax. Relax. Mm. Number four. What does the Holy Ghost do? The Holy Spirit fills our hearts with the love of God. Causing us to seek the lost with undying passion. With undying passion, let me tell you. Well, look at your life and be very honest that these days your passion has gone down. This one is between us. I won't say it loud for anybody to hear. It's between you and me. When you tell me, if you confess, I won't tell anybody. That be very honest that every day we are sometimes... Sometimes when I sit down and we announce, there will be soul winning and televangelism on Saturday at 9 a.m. It's like, you see, we are, we are just saying it. Because people don't want to come. Why? Because see, the Bible says in the last days, eh, many will fall away. The love of many will grow cold. When we lose our love for God, our passion for souls also dies away. I'm telling you. So listen, all of us, Eh? We need God to revive our love for him. When God fills our hearts with love, it will translate into love for souls. Because it is actually the love of God that moved him to our, our, our place to save us. John 3, 16, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for our salvation. So it is because of his love. So when that same love fills us, hmm? What are we going to do? We are going to be so witness automatically. So it's possible that his love in our hearts, eh? I don't know, I don't want to say it has dwindled. Let me say it is dwindling. So at least so that you know you haven't lost it or you have some. But <laughs> it is coming down. May the Lord revive his love in our lives. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. Father, help us. May your love fill our hearts. Romans 5, 8. And you know, the filling of our hearts with love is also the work of the Holy Ghost. So the Bible said, the whole, God pours his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 8. If you put it in NIV. It is God who puts his love in us. He said, okay, this one is talking about, but God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right? Now, listen to something Bishop Oedipo said. He said, it is passion that keeps us in motion. Right? If you have passion in your heart, you'll be on the move. So if you are losing passion, it means that there will be no motion. We will move. And the Holy Ghost is the source of that passion that sets us in motion for God. May our hearts be filled with passion for the Lord in Jesus' name. Number five, what does the Holy Ghost do? He leads and directs us on the harvest field. He leads us to souls that are ripe and ready for harvest. You see, not everybody is ready to be saved, though, or you don't know. It is not everybody that you can win. I Me, mean, when I go, I don't rush. These days, I've given myself... I don't know, a principle I work with. When I go, so I can, can stand in one corner and be watching the people passing. Some of them, I will just give the flyer to them and say, Jesus loves you. But then there are particular people that, then the, the Spirit says, no, talk to this one. And one day, man of God, you were there. You know, we stood around a place at Kokomlimli. I stood there, people were passing, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. But there was one particular guy, the Spirit said, concentrate on him. I took him aside. 
spent a lot of time, explained the scriptures to him, gave him a testimony and told him, come, Jesus will change your life. Do you know, among all the people that I spoke to and took their numbers, he's the only one that came. He's the only one that came. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. So listen, don't be in a rush when you go on soul winning. If every Saturday all of us go and come back with just one soul, would that not be enough? Ah, just one. Or just two, as the Spirit leads you. Don't rush and go and find yourself in the group will be that before they will even discourage you. That day you stop the soul winning. Like one day I went, I was preaching to somebody. I was, you know, talking, explaining something, and then somebody joined midway. Ah! Just when the person was up, I could see that the person was understanding the scriptures. I was coming to wrap up so that we pray the sinner's prayer. Then somebody came. He came and asked a certain question that I know I couldn't answer. Then I got angry. I nearly slapped the guy. <laughs> I don't know whether that has happened to you before. If you are saying something, somebody asks you a question that you know that there and then you don't have the answer. If it were in the classroom, I would have said, go, it's a homework, go and do it. Te- teachers always do that. Who has been a teacher before? Me, I've taught before. Sometimes they ask a question and you don't have... A teacher doesn't know everything. Eh? So you say homework, but this one, there was no opportunity for that. So what am I saying? When the Spirit leads you to the right place, you will not encounter people who... Waste your time with arguments. Eh? No, 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 no. You will not encounter that. So we must allow the Spirit of God to lead us to souls that are ripe and ready for harvest. Acts 8.29. He said, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. It was the Spirit that led Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch. And through that man, the gospel also got to Africa. What if Philip had not listened to the Spirit? Perhaps you and I would not, would not have been saved. Acts sixteen six. You know the Spirit forbade them. I can't read because of time. The Spirit forbade them from preaching in a certain place. I told you, you see, the book of Acts is actually about missions and evangelism. So all the scriptures are coming from there. You see a scripture here, Acts 16, 6 to 10. If you jump to verse uh, 10, let's see what is there. And after he has seen the vision immediately, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for you to preach the gospel unto them. So here, the Spirit permitted them to go to Macedonia, but in the other place, he forbade them. He said, no, 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 don't go there. And sometimes when you resist and you go, that's when you encounter problem. Praise be to Jesus. So when the Spirit leads you, you return with positive results. Yes, you return with positive results. You know, there's a pastor in this church. He's sitting right in front of me. I won't mention his name. But if I tell you this and you're able to figure out who he is, no problem. You know, he was going for soul winning. And the Spirit led him to a particular sister. Hmm? And he preached the word of God. And the sister gave her life to Christ. Look straight for security reasons. <laughs> the person I'm talking about is looking left and right. I think he has seen where I'm going. So he preached to the sister. He gave his life to Christ. And after giving his life to Christ, she gave her hand in marriage to the same person that preached to her. To, hey! And do you know they are married now? They have how many children? But how did you know? Hey! So you people, you know. (laughs) By the spirit. (laughs) You see, so these are some of the fringe benefits. So in every every, uh, production system, there is what we call byproducts. We, We are producing this, but at the end of the day, we'll get other things. So I know Pastor Festus is getting some benefits. As he's serving God. <laughs> yeah. When the Spirit leads, He will lead you to the right place. You meet the right people. And you will preach to them. And after preaching to them, the same Spirit that caught their hearts for Jesus will let them return to you with a bountiful harvest. Clap your hands for Jesus. 
Number six, I'm closing. The Spirit executes vengeance against every opposition to the gospel. Do you know, not everybody likes Jesus. So sometimes you meet one or two devils here and there, and you need the Holy Ghost to silence them. As the church came here, people that stood against us from the beginning, Charlie, all of them are nowhere to be found. I tell you, we didn't fight them physically. We engaged the Holy Ghost in prayer, and he began to sort them out, one after the other, one after the other. And that is how the rest will go in Jesus' name. And our Father has said, this year we are getting another land. The church is expanding with no limits. Right? And he's clearing every opposition our way. So the church can experience growth. So in Acts 13, 6 to 11, you remember Paul versus a man called Elimas, the sorcerer. Somebody is ready to listen to the gospel and this man is trying to, you know, create confusion to distract the person from listening to the gospel. And Paul, empowered by the Holy Ghost, cursed him and instantly he became blind. May God endure with that power. Not that after church, uh huh. Now I have the power to curse my enemies. I'm going to kill all the witches in my family. No, 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 no. That's not the primary purpose. Even though there is room for vengeance against those who fight us in certain areas. But in this particular context, we are talking about the work of the Holy Ghost in executing vengeance against every opposition to the gospel. May anyone opposing you be brought down by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Number seven. He works with us, confirming the word we preach with miracles, signs, and wonders. The Holy Ghost works with us. Oh, you know, witnessing is not only about what you say, right? You understand the word witness. In fact, another synonym or a word similar in meaning to witness is evidence. So, in preaching the gospel, what we say alone is not enough. We need evidence. Somebody say evidence. And the Holy Ghost is the generator of that evidence. And how does he do that? He works miracles, signs and wonders. Okay, you say Jesus heals and delivers. What's the evidence? Ah, then you tell somebody's testimony or even your personal testimony. Ah, I know a brother who used to do this, blah, 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 blah. He was addicted to pornography for several years. But when he came to Jesus, as he listened to the man of God preach, God has turned his life around. That is an evidence. You can use it in soul winning. It makes your soul winning effective. Yeah, evidence. Mark 16, 20. He said, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord working with them. How? Because Jesus had gone. So who was this Lord? The Spirit he promised. When I go, the promise of the Father will come. The Lord, the Lord of the harvest was working with them. And so as they went about preaching, he was confirming the word with miracles, signs, and wonders. May you become a miracle worker in Jesus' name. May you become a miracle worker in Jesus' name. That from today, when somebody is sick in your office, you now be looking for bishop to call or any pastor to call. You now will lay your hands and declare in the name of Jesus, be cast out. You'll be casting out devils because the Holy Ghost has empowered you. You will not lay your hands on the sick and then at the same time you have done this like you are afraid. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't do that. Number nine, or eight, sorry, the last point he preserves the harvest. The Holy Ghost preserves the harvest. So when you win a soul, don't be bothered too much about how they are going to survive. Hmm? That, oh, this guy, I have to follow him everywhere to make sure that he won't go and do any bad thing again. No, 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 no. That's not your work. Leave it for the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that establishes the souls. It is the Holy Ghost that preserves the harvest we bring in. Acts 8.31, the New Living Translation. Acts 831, New Living Translation. And they went forth. Oh. Acts 831. Wow. Okay. He says that the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger. Please note the words. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria, and the church became stronger 
Because the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. The encouragement of the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers. So, it is the Holy Ghost that, you know, brings comfort to the people that even in spite of crisis, they are able to stay in the house of God. He preserves the harvest. Acts 6, 7, he said, And the word of the Lord increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. As they preached the word. And don't forget, the Holy Ghost is the author of the word. All right? The word of God is actually spirit. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, The words I speak unto you, they are spirits in their life. And it is by the word, the spirit, that the souls are established. Mm. So the word of God is a fundamental instrument of establishment. Acts 20, 32, he said, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to be, so it is the word that builds. And I said the word is of the spirit. The word is of the, is the, is the spirit that gives the word and he gives the word to sustain the church. So our business is not to be wondering how God is going to sustain the harvest. As they come in and we teach them the word of God, they will be established in Jesus' name. Now we close with this. How do we engage the Holy Spirit for effective evangelism? How do we engage the Holy Spirit for effective evangelism? Number one, exercise yourself frequently in speaking or praying in tongues. Exercise yourself frequently in speaking and praying in tongues. Jude one twenty, or you can say Jude twenty. It's only one chapter. Jude twenty. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build yourself, you edify yourself, you become stronger. The Spirit becomes magnified in you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So if you are here and you are not you know, you are not baptized or you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, make, find your way to any of the pastors. Let them explain to you and they will lead you in prayer for you to receive the Holy Spirit now, not later. Now you can receive the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of, the, of, 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 of God. Number two, sing spiritual songs. If you want to see the operation of the Spirit, you need to set the right atmosphere for him. You know, there are certain places you can't go because what is happening there is contrary to your spirit. The same way the Holy Ghost can be everywhere. It is in a place where the right atmosphere is set for him that he appears. So sing spiritual songs. Set the right climate for him. Ephesians 5, 18 to 19. Ephesians 5, 18 to 19. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit. In the original translation, it reads this way, be being filled. So it's a process. It's not a one-time event that, oh, today I've been filled with the Holy Ghost and that's enough. No, it must happen every day. It must happen every day. Be being filled with the Holy Ghost. How? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, singing songs. You are the fire in me. You are the power at work. In me, can you sing with me? You are my ever present helper, mm, Holy Spirit. I adore mm, you. Are you are the fire in me? Katona da ba shike tori abada la ba ba ba. You are the power that works. 
Roshakata. Roseske Grande de Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I adore. Precious Holy Ghost, Precious Holy Ghost, I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. I worship you. Precious Holy Ghost, come take, come take your place in me. Precious Holy Ghost, precious Holy Ghost, I worship you. Precious Holy Ghost, precious Holy Ghost, come take, come take your place in me. So as you sing, then you begin to feel the presence of the Spirit. Unless you are dead spiritually, maybe right now as we sang, you, you can feel something. You need, you need, to, you need to be alive spiritually. That's the way to stir the spirit to work in you. And the last point, you must be filled with the word. Be filled with the word of God. Why? Because the Holy Ghost flows through the word. And so to be filled with the word is to be filled with the spirit. Ezekiel 2.2, 2, he said, As he speak, the spirit entered into me. So listen to messages consistently. Read the Bible. Read anointed books. As you do that, those words... There are spirit, there's a spirit behind it. The Holy Ghost, as he enters you, he will begin to drive you to help in gathering souls. Now, I close with this scripture, Matthew 12, 30. Very, very powerful scripture I heard from a, a man of God. Bishop said, if you listen to messages, that's where you get to know scriptures. I've read scripture, I've not seen this one. Matthew 12, 30 said, he that is not with me is against me. And he that, and he that gathereth not with me scattered abroad. So it means if you are not involved in soul winning, Jesus is saying you are against him. You are against him. Can you stand against Christ? No, I can't. So you have no option to surrender your life, to turn your life over, him, over to him to say, Lord, use me to be a soul winner. Empower me. Will you rise on your feet? Rise on your feet and lift your hands unto God. We're going to pray. A very simple prayer. Unless you are not willing to do it. But we are in the last days. And we must respond to the call of soul winning with a sense of urgency. Time is not on our hand. We need God to empower us to do his way. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. Pray and say, Father, empower me. Empower my prayer life. Lift your voice and pray. Father, empower my prayer life. I want to hear, I want to hear you pray. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. We are closing. Father, empower my prayer life. Give me boldness to preach your word. Fill my heart with your love. Empower me with passion for souls. Lift your voice and pray. Father, revive the soul winning spirit in me. Stir up the gift of the spirit in me. Empower me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Father, prepare me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, as an effective witness, as a soul winner, as an intercessor, as a fearless proclaimer of the good news. In the name of Jesus, Father, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Let's lift our voice and pray. The Bible says, as the church prayed, the place where they stood shook and the Spirit came, and they preach the word with boldness. Father, empower us again. Revive us again. Lord, revive us again. Father, revive us again. In the name of Jesus, empower everyone. In the name of Jesus, I see the Holy Ghost coming upon you. I see the Holy Ghost falling upon you. 
He is turning you into a different person. He is anointing your lips to preach his word with boldness, to preach with wisdom, to preach with clarity in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, that as we've received your word, our soul winning life will be shifted to another year and will serve you with effectiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please take your seat. So you want to take your offering. We want to honor the Lord with our substance. Honor the Lord, give him precious seed. You know where you stand. This year, the resolution you made that I'm going to give God this particular amount of money as offering. Those that can give a thousand cities, 500 cities, 200, 300, 100, 50. Don't change it. Don't say today, uh, Papa is not there, so I want to reduce my offering. No, 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 no. Follow the instruction of the Spirit. Lift your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are doing this in obedience to your word. Therefore, Lord, let your blessing be upon every hand that gives. As you have said, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Bless everyone's account. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Precious Holy Ghost, I worship you. I worship you. Precious Holy Ghost, come take your place, Lord. Come take. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Cast your seed with joy. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. also want to be a vessel through whom God will convert others. But you know, it must begin from you. You are here in this auditorium. Somebody invited you to church. They spoke to you yesterday. They sent you a text message. You are here. You want to make a very important decision to turn your life over to Jesus. Then after you've given your life to him, you can also lead others to Christ. Wherever you are in the auditorium, Lift your hands and come to the altar. I'm going to lead you to pray and Jesus is going to come into your life. Let's put our hands together as they are coming. Father, we declare the offering blessed in Jesus' mighty name. You can go, please. Yes. Jesus is going to change your story. Let's keep clapping as they are coming. You may never have another chance to make the decision. Yes. This is the time for you to give your life to Christ. Yeah. My sister, God bless you for coming. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to turn your life around. Yes. He said, all of you who are heavily laden, 
come unto me and I will give you rest. He will give you rest. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Somebody says, I used to be in the church. Something happened. I left church. The arms of Jesus are forever open. You can return to him now. You can turn back to Jesus now. It is never too late to turn back. Wow. Lift your hands with me. Lift your hands with me. I want you to say this prayer after me from your heart. I hope all of you can speak English. So say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for having mercy on me and giving me opportunity to come to your house. I've heard your word and my heart is open to receive you into my life. I confess that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood and write my name in the book of life and help me to serve you all the days of my life in Jesus name Amen Father may the grace in this house establish these ones in Jesus precious name Amen please follow the pastor follow him the pastor on my right he has something to tell let's clap our hands for them So we want to present our tithes, whatever blessing that came to you this week, you want to honor God, you want to obey his word, give him a tenth, a tenth of the blessing, all the income you have received. The altar is open, please bring your tithe to the Lord. Bring your tithe, bring your tithe. Thank you Lord, thank you Jesus. to our God forever and ever I power and might oh belongs to our God forever video from the beginning of the service Tuesday there's going to be anointing for exploits our father himself is going to be in this auditorium let's put our hands together for the Lord if you're excited about his coming yes so they will play the video before we go but then before that let's also remember there's going to be Easter convention do you have the flyer you can display it Easter convention now Holy Hill is the district headquarters for Assemblies of God Ghana at the Brakat District. 
And our father is the chief host. Yes, Easter Convention 2023. It's going to happen in Holy Hill Chapel from the 5th to the 9th of April 2023. Clap your hands for the Lord. So start, start talking to people. Invite all your, your family and friends from the village. Let them come. Nobody's going to quell this Easter. We are all here. We are not going anywhere. We are here. All right. So the video, can you play the video? Uh, all the way from Singapore at the Trinity Assemblies of God Church coming your way from the Adam congregation. By the grace of God, we've been here for some days attending pastor's conference. We've been impacted. Our lives have never been the same. We are coming to Ghana. We have invite every holy healer, all the sons of the prophets, this coming Tuesday to this mega anointing service entitled Anointed for Greater Works. Bring your own bottle of oil. It's going to be a very impactful healing, miracle teaching service. Your life and destiny will never, never, never be the same. All holy healers are welcome. This Tuesday is a special Tuesday. God is going to anoint us for miracles, signs and wonders and especially the spirit of soul winning. Acts 1 8, he said, He shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We are in the last days. I believe most of you have heard this early morning, yesterday, today, that the American banking system has started collapsing. Major shakeup in the Silicon Valley Bank. These are all signs of the end times. And as we are getting closer to the end times, the most important thing is to concentrate on show winning. And to win souls and he that winner so is wise and once you win souls god is going to provide for those who do what he wants them to do god bless you this coming tuesday on the 14th of march all roads lead to holy hill for this special anointing service don't miss it your life and destiny will never be the same we are coming with full loaded with fresh oil anointing for great hours come with your own bottle of oil your life and destiny will never never be the same and i also bring you greetings for this morning service be blessed as you hear the word god richly bless you amen and jesus is lord wow wow so it's going to be a mega service that none of us should miss amen now, if today is the first time of coming here, we'd like to give you a special Holy Hill welcome. Will you raise your hand with me wherever you are? Please come to the left side of the auditorium. Come to my left. They will meet you shortly after the service and tell you something. Church, let's appreciate them for coming. Wow. God bless you for responding to our invitation. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Mm. We love you. We say, we say that we appreciate you. Hey. Holy hill, where the root, hey. Jesus. That's not my ministry, holy hill. Say, okay, chief song, Dianka. I will flow. So welcome, welcome home. Let's rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet. We are sharing the grace of God together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Supernatural growth. Shakespeare.